Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Hungry Bleak Show. I am your host, Antonio Tomares. Um, I'm sorry, I was my mind got a little um, odd because I was looking at the intro video, and I'm thinking already of a new intro video to do. Especially going to be because I've been watching so much anime lately. It's definitely going to be anime influenced. Hopefully, it's something cool, and it translates to what's in my head. We'll, we'll go from there. But first off, as always, y'all, you all know how are you doing? How was your week? Was it good? How was work? Work, yeah, work is like that sometimes. I truly understand. How's your family, loved ones? Okay, did you take care of that thing you had to take care of? All right, that that happens. Did you drink water? Did you take your vitamins, your meds? Okay, cool, great. Like I said, we've got so many guests coming through all the time, all the time, all the time. I will have a sit down with you. We will talk comics. We will do some reviews and we will have the conversations that we have when it's just you and me and everyone else watching. That makes sense. So, you know, I've just been having guest after guest after guest. It's been really cool. I'm getting so many different perspectives and learning about so many different projects I do not know. And I'm being introduced to uh, uh, creatives and creators that I um, were on my radar that, I, but I didn't really get in depth about. So this is a very exciting time. I'm enjoying this a like, huge, huge amount, honestly. So today is going to be no different. Now, I've only had, I think, one other person that I've spoken to from, as we Americans like to say, for some reason, across the pond. And it was such a fun time, and I love it. I love speaking to creatives in different countries. There's a different uh, perspective. Actually, no, this will be the third one. Actually, yeah, third one. It's beautiful because it's a different perspective. Um, you find out about different, uh, how comics may be seen in different countries. And that's always interesting to me because I love to have that, 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 um, that knowledge of going, okay, well, it's like this here, but over there, they see it differently, or they may call something different, which I enjoy. So today, I'm going to be speaking to an incredible writer and editor, and incredibly fast. The conversation that we just had was quite in-depth, and just in the bit of time that I spoke to her, I learned way more than I think I've learned in school. And I am appreciative of that, because again, it's a different perspective. I love it. And how they saw Vegas, which if you know me, you know, I'm not going to Vegas anytime soon, but it kind of is interesting to me, what have you. So I'm excited to have her here because she's a part of the Epiphany Engine project, which we talked about before with with, with uh, Tony Kittrell. And she has so many other projects going on and they're really cool. And I want to talk about them and I want to find out more about her history uh, as far as she got in the comics. So without any further ado, folks, let's just get into it. Folks, please welcome Colleen Douglas. Hi. Hello. Hello out there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today, Colleen? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank thank you for being on. I truly appreciate you having the time and the space for it. You've got so much going on. And with this project, it's great. Excuse me. Um, and I was totally <laughs> and I really enjoyed our 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 um our talk about Vegas which will, <laughs> if I ever go yes. there, I want to see it through your eyes. So when I look at it and I go, oh my God, yeah, she was right. <laughs> but now it's got even odder because it's been a couple of years since that conversation. It's even yes, more surreal now. In my case, I can say that and go home. <laughs> so, yes. You know. So They might um, never let me back in the United States. So. I, and <laughs> look, I'm sure they will again. Yeah. <laughs> so you have so many things going on and uh, such a rich history in, 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 in the comic book and um, uh, world and culture. How did you get your, your, um, your start in comics? Well, I've been um, actually on the 25th of March. Um, it will be one decade since I've been in comics. So I will. Congratulations. Thank you. 10 years. Thank you. <laughs> um so I've been writing comics um, sort of on and off. And I think I wrote my first one in uh, completely in 2014. But mm -hmm. um, your first comic is never your published comic. <laughs> no. <laughs> you learn lots of things about um, the comic book industry then. And also because I'm in England, um, Britain didn't. I think it's it's getting better sort of gradually, but um, they didn't really have a comic books uh, industry per se here. And there wasn't really uh, publishers um, en masse. You know, I think maybe they have like sort of two or three 
something like that. And um, I think that if you were creating comics uh, like I do, which is, you know, from an indie kind of perspective, mm -hmm. and I, you're not one of the establishments, um, known names, then um, you, where your comics will be seen or, you know, where people will find out about you would more or less be sort of in localized comic cons or um, you would sort of be better known abroad than you <laughs> than you are in England. In my mm -hmm. case, that was certainly how it happened for me. I um, first, my first comic, which was published, was called Titan. And um, I had written Titan um, sort of um, about two years before um, it it had actually been published. And I'd written another comic before that, which was called Ascension. And um, I still have that. And, and I don't think it'll ever see the light of day because <laughs> I look at it again and I'm exceedingly embarrassed by that comic. So I look. Uh, I think I always think of that as my uh, reminder of what not to do uh, when when writing a comic again. You know, this, mm -hmm. was, this was the exercise in <laughs> in cringe. So <laughs> I, I would no, no, that is not happening. Um, but so yeah, I I basically uh, had to send. I, I went to comic cons a lot in uh, in London and. Um, I met different kinds of comics creators um, from different backgrounds. And one of the comics creators I met at the time was uh, a man called Juan El Terez. And uh, he was the um, owner and boss of uh, Amigo Comics. And um, I was, you know, very excited to meet him uh, through another person who had introduced me. Originally, I was, I had met the other person um, who um, was running um, a comic book company um, called, <clears throat> I think it was Diego Comics, something mm -hmm. like that. And, <coughs> excuse me. Sure. And um, what had happened was that he said to me, oh, I know this this other chap and you know I think that your comic could be interesting to him I'm in England I'm drinking yes. tea I, un I understand <laughs> and, and, um, so I thought okay I will go I'll go over there and you know I'll tell him all about it and it was very exciting and and he was like oh right okay and you know tell me about your comic and show me this and that and at that time I had uh, started I'd already started writing Titan and I had started the process of um, of uh, um, um, putting down pages. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had some pages and other bits on my phone and, you know, you, you want to get your whole vision out there <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> and he was really nice. He was very patient and, you know, he listened and he says, well, you know, if you get this, get it finished, then you know um, you should reach out to me and he gave me some details and so on and then I kept that in mind and I, you know with the understanding I'm going to finish this comic and get it done and I think that for a lot of people that's one of the stumbling blocks <laughs> in that you've got a comic idea but you never finish the comic you have to finish the comic mm -hmm. to really get started on the process and um, so I completed Titan and um, and then I reached out and I said, oh, I have this comic and, you know, and he says, oh, this is brilliant. Let me see it. And I showed him everything and we we were still finishing off uh, bits and pieces on the comic, but, you know, he took us on and gave me, gave me that chance, gave me that opportunity, that break, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and then Titan was, was released, um, <laughs> in uh, in in May of uh, 2018, and I was I was absolutely ecstatic to be in the, in Diamond Previews, um, mm -hmm. right up until I saw what happened <laughs> in Diamond Previews, where they only put my first name 
<laughs> no surname. Oh. And, and my my artist, uh, Andre Stahlschmidt, who's now back working with me um, on another piece of work. They put this huge question mark in the middle of his name. <laughs> his surname. It was... <laughs> yeah. So that was my first... My first uh, time with the uh, diamond, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, that's interesting to do. And uh, I was I was so upset. And um, my my dear friend who takes care of my my website, um, she she was more excited than me that you know I had a comic coming out, and so she couldn't wait for when previews put it up, and so she rushed over there and <laughs> she saw that it was just my first name and nothing else, and she got on Facebook. I think she let them have both barrels, as you say. <laughs> so they kind of I don't I don't know who was responsible for fixing it, but it was fixed, really. I mean, on the same day. I was impressed. I thought she's she's phenomenal when <laughs> when she's angry. <laughs> so um so yeah, that's that was my first comic and my first uh, comic book experience and um my comic was actually taken on by Amigo, which was based in Malaga, and um, they are uh, were distributing through Diamond uh, in America. So, in fact, I had to leave the United Kingdom to go to Spain to arrive in America to come back around to the United Kingdom in that my comic came out at Forbidden Planet and was on the shelf. Oh, wow. So it was interesting to walk into a comic book shop and see my comic on the shelf, even though I was, <laughs> I was, my comic was not, uh, you know, made in the UK. So that was uh, one <laughs> of the, one of the experiences of, of starting off in comics. Um, and then um, El Torres uh, offered me to, uh, to write for Amigo Comics. Um, and at that time, also to start uh, doing small editorials. So mm. I would um, edit comics um, from other creators, uh, you know, who, whose uh, first language may not have been English, it might be Spanish or something else. Mm. And, um, and so I was doing that. And then uh, he then said to me, um, you know, do you, do you want to write a, a comic for Amigo because you know you you've done very well with Titan, so I thought okay, you know, I will try that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> throw it at me. <laughs> I'm in England. Uh, I, I can be prepared for everything. And <laughs> so he then uh, said to me, uh, "There's this book, and um, you know we've we've only done a zero issue, and um, we've never done anything else with it. You can." You can take it and you can you can do what you want with it, and then um, I created Gargantuan, which um, is uh, the book that I sort of mentioned in passing, which was about um, the Lozen character. Yes, who was um, her? The character was called Sarah Lozen, and she was based on the real Lozen, who was a uh, Chiricahua Indian and um, was a woman who rode side by side with Geronimo and uh, fought with him and, um, you know, is held in quite high esteem because uh, she was seen as as brave as the men and maybe in some respects braver as well. Mm -hmm. So um, this character was named after her and the character was also a native um, American Indian and um, was, uh, um, it's the story was all about um, sort of, a dystopian kind of future uh, where mankind's future uh, would be hominid when they they wouldn't be evolving but rather would be devolving from a certain point onwards and um, uh, Sarah Lozen is one of the people who had been selected um, by this uh, sort of alien species who left bio machines in the planet to uh, take the hominids forward in society. And um, there was another chap called Creus, and uh, he has the same, similar DNA as her, but he's not focused on 
taking anyone forward. <laughs> He's, he wants to be the king of the world, you know. So, yes. So um, she's the only person who can kind of take him on. And it's a kind of a, um, an argument about evolution, really, and where, you know, what, what that means when you've evolved outside of certain parameters or devolved outside of them. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was one of the things that I choose to write about um, with that story, because I think it was a perfect vehicle to kind of explore if you had the capacity um, for great technology and great knowledge, but you were limited by circumstance, i.e. your, <laughs> your evolution, you know, what, well, how would you handle that, you know, because um, Creus is more on the side of colonization in that he believes, uh, you know, the, if, if uh, he's selected us as the higher species um, among this uh, future, then um, mm -hmm. there's no reason to compromise and there's no reason to, um, to sort of uh, fall in line or to serve anyone. They should all be serving him. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. You know, superiority thing. So that was um, not that was one of the things that uh, Gargantuan was about. And um, after I did that, um, it turns out that that book <laughs> did quite well. And the diamond diamond has this top five hundred thing, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, so it did well for an indie and, and, and a foreign girl in another country you know and um, <laughs> so then i was asked to write a second book for amigo and i wrote um the volume two uh of the apocalypse girl and the main reason i did that is because um elderess who had written the original apocalypse girl uh said to me uh, i'm a man in my 40s and i don't know anything about the teenage girl you know so maybe you should take it on because at some point you might have been a teenage girl. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I I then said okay, and uh, you know I wrote the volume two of the Apocalypse Girl, which I think is um, a, a lot of um, a lot of people in the UK, uh, well, a lot of girls in the UK kind of know of that one because you know they they consider that to be quite a <laughs> quite a fun sort of story um and that was about a girl who was um, sort of born to bring about an apocalypse but you know she's she chose not to and now she has to try and kind of fit in but she has this kind of dark side that she's afraid of because she thinks that you know she could lose herself and she could become this monstrous thing that she was born to be and and it would destroy everything that she loves including her friends and all of that and also she's kind of at 17 discovering first love you know <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's a whole big thing and um and then of course the 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 person she's up against is uh, a, a priest who well a cardinal who was um, <laughs> who, who believes that she's evil she was born to bring about an apocalypse and you know she's not allowed to live and you should find ways to kill her and get rid of her because there's no place in God's world, according to him, uh, for the likes of her. So, uh, anyway, she's got friends that help her out, so <laughs> she she keeps him at a healthy distance away, <laughs> away from her. So that's useful. Okay. So, um, yeah. So you know, it's it kind of uh, when I started writing comics and um, getting involved in them, I I really wanted to tell fun stories, and I wanted stories that could um, incorporate anybody really you know anyone who wants to read them and um, the idea with me was that I wanted to tell um, stories about strong women because I grew up um, with strong women in my life I you know I don't know any damsels in distress yes I, you know I I know damsels who create distress <laughs> They, they cause it they don't actually don't actually wait wait to be rescued you know yeah yeah so, yeah so these are these are women who from my family who are um pretty self-sufficient and so when i wanted to write stories i wanted to write stories about strong independent women and um you know who 
could uh, direct their own lives. And um, no matter what the obstacles were, they didn't lose track of um, their identity and who they were. So that's one of the things um, that I that I like writing about a great deal. It's one of the things of the woman behind me <laughs> as well, who is who is uh, she's a supernatural. So yes, one of the things. But she's not the lead of the story, but the story encompasses her as well to to a degree as well. So yeah. what would you say is the biggest difference between comics in America, as 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 far as like like what you've seen, what you see see is the biggest difference between comics culture in America and comics culture in London. Right. Well, for a start, in Europe, we like bon dessiné. That means that a lot of times, the the style of comics that's done in um, America in that in terms of a floppy, mm -hmm. it's not it's not really something that we do a lot of here. And um, we do more what you would call a trade paperback or a graphic novel kind of oh, thing because, okay. yeah, because Europe tends to, and also we're not in the habit of kind of reading and disposing of our comics in the same way. We kind of, if we buy a comic and we read it, it's because we like it and we want to put it on our bookshelf, you know. So we don't hmm. really um, have as much uh, in the same way of, of just disposing of comics and that they're just disposable, you know. So for us, we collect. Sometimes we collect in exchange, you know. So um, I think it, it, yeah, it kind of depends on, you know, what sort of what sort of comic it is now. I mean, now I don't. Uh, I think that you know the mass produced stuff, like a lot of manga. Some people may keep the classic mangas, for example, mm -hmm. like um, Akira or. Um, uh, what do you call it? My my favorite, which is uh, um, Google Thirteen, who's a hitman. Oh, I, I like him. I like him. I like him. That's but that to me that's yes. manga. I mean, I I don't follow manga now because mm -hmm. um, it's not because it's not interesting, but I just think that there's a lot of it. There's it's being kind of produced with maybe not the same level of. Of what you would get with like berserk, or or um, okay, yeah, you know, or uh, what do you call it? What's what's the other one? Um, Ninja uh, Scroll. Yeah, Ninja Scroll. Like that, like like that type Ninja of yeah. Scroll or Legend of the Overfiend, or um, mm, yeah, or uh, um, my, one of my favorites was um, Cyber City Oedo Eight Hundred Eight. <laughs> okay, I love yeah. that. Oh wow, because it's yeah. just. <laughs> that's just out there, you know. I like that that kind of stuff. I mean, to me, or you know, like Junji Ito. If I'm going along the horror lines of things, mm -hmm. that's real fantastic, terrifying horror. So um, that kind of uh, manga that I used to um, look at, and I I think the nearest thing to that probably is uh, maybe Studio Ghibli. It's, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Movies, you know, because yeah. Mr. Miyazaki is amazing, and um, so I think that probably those those would be the kind of of things that I would I would like keep or I would be interested in in sort of having a collection of, and I think that um, here it's it's that people read people tend to collect and gravitate a lot towards um, um, like bon dessiné styles and um, the the kind of American sort of 22 page comic is they they have them as well and they do read them um, mm -hmm. because you know for the people who are reading uh, Marvel and DC and you know image or something superhero stuff then um, they that would be the normal format, but a lot of times when um, when we make a comic um, that is made in Europe, it, it's it tends to um, sort of form itself into a trade <laughs> of yeah. some sort, and that's what happened with Titan because when Titan was released in America, um, it was in single issues of you know twenty two pages, mm -hmm. but when it came to Europe, uh, Titan. 
Titan became a trade, you know, a trade trade paperback. You know, oh, okay. so, yeah, because that's how they would consume the same material, but on the side of the fence. So Titan came out like that, and uh, it also came out in Spanish. So, for example, you know, in Spain, people would would are more likely to have a book like this than than um, than a single sort of page to page. Hmm, that's very interesting. I actually, I actually like that more. Like, I will have certain single issues that have a, an emotional meaning to me. Mm. Um, but I'd rather have the actual, like, all together, especially because I want to read more. I, I don't want to just read that one issue and then be left on a cliffhanger. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to read that whole arc, that whole yeah, season. That's so, right. That's right. And it's, so, and it's easier to just have around. Like, if I'm carrying it around, like if I'm on a, going on a train. Like nowadays, I'll have my tablet. But if I'm taking like um. I'm not going to take four separate issues <laughs> on the train. No, I'm not, I'm not no. going to do it. Having mm -hmm. the trade is much easier, and it just has a better feel to it. So, oh, I could definitely appreciate that. Thank you for. I've yeah. always wondered about like little differences. So that was very interesting. Yeah, that's that's definitely one. Um, yeah. and it's one of the reasons why when I created Silk Cotton, which is this woman here, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, that's a that's a trade, and it comes out. Um, in America from um, Rosarium Publishing in uh, in June. And that's, it's going to be, uh, it's um, 222 pages. That's, per that's, 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 that's a good <laughs> size. That's nice what I'm talking book. about. Yeah, like, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. It's not quite a Bible, but you know. No, but, it, but, but, but it's a definite tome, which, which I can definitely <laughs> appreciate. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the main reason. I mean, a lot of my uh, my work. Um, there's there's a book that was called um, Carmine that went to Action Lab, which unfortunately they destroyed. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's okay, because it's it's making its own return again. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think um, hopefully um, Second Sight Publishing will will, <laughs> will be. Um, We'll, we'll be considering it. and um, But Carmine is really a 15-issue book, <laughs> you know? Mm. So, because when I wrote it, I wrote it um, over three arcs of uh, five issues. So okay. in a way, it's it's sort of three uh, trade sizes. And um, so the first sort of five um, issues, I think they will, they may be, reconsidering bringing that back so if that happens that would be very nice and <laughs> Definitely. Okay. I, will, <laughs> I will look forward to the volume too because when i wrote the story um the idea was that it would be over over sort of three arcs and in each arc there are five issues and it's a very big very dark <laughs> <laughs> and uh, very I... phenomenal, very phenomenal story. And it's it's called Carmine because it is a red book, you know. And of course, Carmine is the is the color that uh, comes from the cochineal insect, mm. and is is widely used in the beauty industry. That's how you have all the red lipsticks and the rouges and all of that stuff. Mm. And um, it's only produced by the female cochineal. And in this house, only the females are queens. <laughs> So yes, I, mm. I I went along there, and we have we have cochineal insects and moths and all sorts okay. of interesting types. Oh, <laughs> None okay. of them are human, so it's okay, <laughs> it's fine. Though. I never do humans very well, so you know. we need stories okay. that are not. We need stories that branch off. Yes. And I love the fact that you do stories that branch up. That one that you were telling me about that, aside from Silk Cotton, which definitely has my interest, the other one that you were talking about is Vic Argus. Yes. Which definitely has my interest because I love the way that you just described it. Yeah. Well, as I said, Vic Argus is, um, Vic Argus is really um, uh, an evolved rat man. He's, mm. you know, he's not human. Let's forget that bit. Uh, he was genetically created along with uh, his species, which are called Creus. And um, basically they were created to sort of get rid of um, of some people on a planet because the planet has a lot of natural resources and um, there's a big 
body that's called um, Economy Interplanetary. Mm-hmm. And um, they're all about uh, taking over resources and planets and other things. And they have all these different sort of designations. And it's called Species Negotiator because they're all kinds of uh, different DNAs. For example, uh, as I said, Vic is an evolved rat man. Um, and, uh, you know, he has uh, Wolverine uh, DNA in him uh, as well as Black Rat. Mm-hmm. That's the evil Ratman part. And, um, you know, they were originally created as, a, a, as I said, as, a, as mindless killing machines, really. And so economy created them and dropped them onto the planet, you know, according to the specs. And, um, and they were there to, to wipe out um, any kind of opposition before the economy would come in and sort of take over the resources of that place. Except that when they dropped the Creus in, uh, they made the Creus with the chlorophyll DNA, which means that they can actually eat anything that that is um, outside of their normal food um, expectation. So since food ran out after they, they'd eaten all the colonists, mm-hmm. um, they started to eat the local flora and fauna. And um, those actually uh, produced hemicellulose because uh, they were supposed to kind of go in, kill off the rest of, uh, of, of the species there and then die themselves. But then they realized that, economy realized that they weren't dying. So they decided to spray the planet with a with virus. And the first time they did that, only 5% of the Creus died. And then, so they modified the virus and re the planet. And this time only 1% of them died. But what they also did inadvertently by sort of changing that is um, cause them to evolve. <laughs> and... Mm-hmm. <laughs> And because of the fact that they were already eating the local flora and fauna, which formed hemicellulose in their system, hemicellulose is a way is is a, a kind of a method that reinforces cells in your body and would stop them from breaking down ordinarily. Mm-hmm. Okay. And because that happened, it means that the triggers that they put in them uh, would no longer work. So they couldn't kill them off. They couldn't change them, they couldn't control them, and they evolved. And because they were from the background of uh, the black rat, if you think of a rat population, um, a female rat can actually have like five litters in a year. Mm -hmm. And you have to think of them evolving. And they hadn't seen them in 40 years. (laughs) So they don't know what they look like anymore. So that's an interesting thing. And um, and uh, they basically economy's uh, plan was to um, to get into this this planet that's called Hancock's. They have a main sort of city area called um, Hina. And uh, that is it's full of sort of natural resources. And that's what they're all about, really. Except that for the Creus, they're all about survival and big Argus is the negotiator to bring the conversation to the table. And he does that. <laughs> See, this one is the fact that it was like about, <clears throat> if you say um, that they evolved and that it was, they had planned on trying to kill them and they couldn't and not seeing them after 40 years, just that. 40, 40, 40 yeah, zero years. 40 years, like that just yes. interests me about yes. how they went through all this, went through all this, and they could not get rhythm and the evolving and how, yeah, that yeah. just interests the really the hell out of me, yeah. I'll be honest with yeah. you. I, I I did Vic Argus with the understanding of uh, Michael Crichton's statement that um, nature yes. will always find a way. And and, <laughs> and it always does. And nature did, mm-hmm. did find a way as well in this story. So, yeah. And the other one that you have coming out, which is the huge monumentous um, thing is Epiphany Engine. You are a part of yes. this incredible project. Yes. 
that is a behemoth. <laughs> Very <laughs> much behemoth. so. And I, I sometimes look at it as a cosmic behemoth because you know it's it's um, it's it has you you can look at all the sides of it and you really I still think that you can't fully um, perceive it until you you you've got it mm -hmm. in your hand because it encompasses a great many factors. Um, it is at its core about family and really about um, what that means and that you don't always necessarily love family, you know, mm. and how you can come together as a family um, to, to achieve a goal and to sort of work through your differences and to understand that actually your actions um, have consequences and you you cannot take it for granted that because this person is a family member they will necessarily always understand you it's also about vulnerabilities in families and being able to self-examine and and to acknowledge when when you you're not you're not strong enough or you didn't see it or you know you missed important pivotal things and um and it's about taking responsibility and ownership as well it's it's a lot of things tied up in epiphany engine and that's the reason why it says you know a single epiphany is is where it all happens it's 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 the thing that begins the whole sort of ball rolling forward you know and it's, um yeah i'm just excited because when I, I i saw the first thing i was like oh okay and i kept seeing it all over social media i'm like what is that i kept seeing everyone's emblem or like logo from their hopes i'm like what is and then you realize this cross huge crossover and the names that are attached to it are a, a who's who a hitter's row that you have going and yeah. i was so excited yeah. i'm like oh this is gonna yeah. be it's like it's like 30 30 publishers that yeah. are indie publishers that are coming together to um mm -hmm. you know to bring epiphany engine online <laughs> so mm -hmm. to speak you know and i think um, tony was saying it's over 100 creatives yes and i said yes. wait what and yeah just i was like <laughs> the again the scope <laughs> yeah it's so huge but so cool at the same time seeing everybody getting together on, on this on this huge thing Yes, because I think that it's because people always wanted to tell one great, phenomenal story mm. about the thing that matters most to them. You know, the people closest to them in their lives, and that's their families. Yeah. You know, if you're in this position, what would you do? Kind of thing, you know. And people also sort of, I think for some people, they want the opportunity to um to show that we can always be so much more than you know our single components when we are united in something you know mm -hmm. and um and that that matters and that it can actually work it can happen and i think that's that's a phenomenal thing i i just i i look at it all the time and i just think yes mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so yes i'm i'm very excited for it i i, I can't wait for them to unveil it at uh, juneteenth because um, that's everything is um you can actually go to the kickstarter now and sign up and you would be able to um to be notified when it kicks off i think the plan is to to kick it off in juneteenth yes yeah. So, yeah. Um, so as always, folks, well, I'll have the link to the Kickstarter in the episode description, uh, just so you can go and, and just get your name in there. Because I, I love the fact that I think within like a couple of minutes of it starting, the email started going out, letting you know it started, it's live. And I'm just thinking about the different tiers that are going to be a part of this huge and how everybody's going to be throwing something in there extra. It's yes. again, it's 
it's mind boggling, but in the best yes. way possible. And I'm so happy. Yes. You to be bringing this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for it. I'm always happy to throw whatever in with, with something as great as that, because, um, you know, it's, it's an important story to mm -hmm. tell. And, um, so in my case, uh, yes, I'm, I'm part of the, the writing, uh, team for, for Epiphany Engine. Um, and I think that by now they've, they've put it up on uh, social media. It's kind of been, uh, floating around everywhere where people know who's involved and all of yes. that. Um, Brandon Thomas is one of the people on there as well as uh, Rodney Barnes. Mm. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think you could ask for more, you know? I mean, Personally. Rodney Barnes, I'm yeah. a huge fan of uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's right. Oh, Philadelphia, Blackula. You know. Yes. Well, I haven't gotten to read Blackula yet and I'm, yeah. I know I'm going to love it. And Brandon Thomas, I mean, as anyone knows me and excellence. can see the sweatshirt, obviously. Excellence. All I'm the way. I'm a huge fan <laughs> of excellence. Um, yeah. Miranda yeah. Mercury. Yes. Noble that he was doing for Catalyst Prime. I've been a long yeah. time. So, and I didn't know that Brandon Thomas was a part of that. So I don't know if anybody can see the glint in my eye that kind of flashed when you said his name. Yeah, it, yeah so. it was, it's, it's, no, I, we, I, I didn't know that either until, <laughs> until, uh, cause, um, in the Epiphany Engine, um, we, we have a, a group where we discuss important things and mm -hmm. Tony had said, okay, guys, this is, this is now the, the public, uh, you know, <laughs> information post, which we kind of sort of got maybe, I don't know, sort of. I'd say an hour before before it hits everywhere else. Oh wow! <laughs> so we were floored. Okay. I'm floored at the same time, you know. But it's. I think it's the first time you you'd be happy to have a knockout, you know. You just yes. You'd be, you'd be lying there. Like normally, I don't like surprises, but yeah, the surprises yeah. that I'm hearing, and I'm like, oh, and it's I, I, the beautiful thing about it is that it's there's there's people that are a little more indie that may not have had the shine that they deserve and then you have yeah. these bigger creatives so to have them be a part of that and everyone mixing together and having those names be being more shown and yeah. saying this is what this person can do but check out their their other stuff that they've got going and everything yeah. again it's very exciting to me and i'm i'm so I mean, happy amazing i i love the fact that there are so many creatives on board mm -hmm. and so many publishers on board because i think yeah. also people might not be aware that that there were quite so many uh, um, black publishers out there, you know, mm -hmm. um, because you it's not the it's not the immediate thing that comes to mind. Uh, I think for an awful lot of people, they they kind of uh, you know some things they know, and then uh, other things it, it kind of passes them by. So in many respects, now you can actually go and look up all of these different creative houses and. And see what they're doing, you know. And there's there's something, there's something there for everybody. There's there's something about everything yeah. in there somewhere, you know. No matter what kind of comic you like, somebody somewhere is producing that. For yeah. Sure. And the, the the thing I I think the biggest thing about this is it literally is a rising tide raises all ships. Yes. And seeing that and that everybody's on that equal basis, it's just yeah. I'm. I'm just biding my time until it happens. So when Juneteenth comes, I will be one of the first people <laughs> who will be on Kickstarter kicking in. And I want to see just everything that you all have going on. And I'm so happy yeah. for all of you to be a part of this. I think it's great. Yes, you know, I'm 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 loving it. I'm absolutely excited. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I can't say much more, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> like nobody's I'm, business. I'm not gonna ask and, any more uh, of you. And uh, you know, it's 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 supremely exciting. Um, I, if I'm asked to contribute something to the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. then I, I probably will contribute original. And there's an original art piece from uh, Big Argus, so <laughs> I might be throwing that in there. This can't. Who, who that's could, perfect. Who could want it? <laughs> I will say, it's uh, it's by Davigo, so. <laughs> He he of Moon Knight uh, cover land thing, <laughs> yeah, mm. that dude. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. So th this is going to be, like I said, June, Juneteenth is going to be this. So I'm going to have the link yeah. for the Kickstarter in the episode description. So you can go and sign up. You just put your email in. And when it drops, you'll actually be notified that day. You'll go, you'll check out all the different tiers. You'll see all the creatives that are going on. I mean, I doubt they'll have a list of everyone, but it's a, literally a who's who of out there. This is going to be a huge project. I need y'all to go and check this out. I'm also going to have um, the, uh, I'll have a couple of other links in there from some of the indie creators that are a part of this. I'll have them also in the episode description, just so you can all see. Now, as y'all always know, always concerned about um, mental health, creatives, a lot going on in the world in general, but then to see life and being a creative and how anxiety ridden that can be. And as we were talking about earlier, imposter syndrome and other stuff, stuff. So what's one thing that you do that helps to keep you grounded, that helps to keep you in that moment? Well, um, I do a lot of very uh, strange and interesting things to uh, facilitate relaxation really um i like opera i know Ooh. i know okay. Believe it okay. or not. yes i like opera and uh, i like to listen to opera sometimes but equally i would listen to it's kind of interesting i i listen to opera and then i listen to rock and then i listen okay. to cosmic jazz <laughs> so, no, I'm, all, I'm always curious also about what creatives are reading what they're taking yeah. as far as content what are three comics or graphic novels that are that are your favorites that hit you? Well, I I kind of read eclectically, so I read mm -hmm. all over. I I've never I've never sort of I never read one sort of graphic novel at a time. I'm sometimes reading two or three different things mm -hmm. um, because my mind is like that. So you know, I just feed my mind with whatever it wants. Mm -hmm. So for the at the moment, I'm um, reading the Ford from Greg Rocker because yes. I really, you know, I kind of, I really love. I, I oh. Yeah, that was gonna be. It. Yep, there. almost. Yep, yep. I swear I don't know there. how. how there it's. it's on. Can you see that? I can kind of see it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think it's because I'm doing something weird. No, there. there it is. It's the background. It the colors I think are just blending. In the yeah. most harmonious most way possible. Ways. <laughs> yeah. And basically getting it. Yeah. So The Forged. Mm -hmm. This is from Greg Rucker. I'm reading that at the moment. Uh, I, I really like the way um, he writes women because, you know, that appeals to me. And also, I like his style of storytelling. I mean, I, I liked, you know, uh, reading um, um, Lazarus as oh. well. So, the old guard. Yes, the old guard. Phenomenal. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of I really enjoy his his kind of way. So I'm reading The Forge. Um I'm catching up with Tom King because, you know, yeah. I I I literally I had um I think I had like maybe three or four issues of uh, of his Mr. Miracle and okay. I didn't oh gosh this background is annoying but uh, it's almost it's, yeah. yeah but there oh there yeah there, there it is. is yeah there we yeah. go From down, sweet yeah. Spot. yeah that's the one right yeah so I started to read I started reading it and then because I'm a speed reader that's the yeah. other thing I read that's one of the reasons why I read sort of three or four books at a time and people are always asking me, did you read that? And then when I have a conversation and they realize, yes, I've actually read, read it. that. But because I'm a speed reader, I don't like reading um, single issues necessarily. If I know that the run is 12, I will wait until I've had all 12 books mm -hmm. and then I'll start reading them. Because if I read sort of issue one and two, I don't, I don't enjoy sort of being left hanging for months, you know, or exactly. maybe it could be even longer if, if there's a delay or something. So mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of that. And therefore I just kind of wait and get it all together. And then I just binge read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I was, I, I had a, I, I, I had a, a couple of copies that I didn't have. So, I waited until I got those, and then now I read them, starting to read the whole thing. 
And then I kind of read backwards as well. So I'm reading. Brother Voodoo, yes. Yeah, I'm reading Brother Voodoo at the moment because it's, you know, it's quite fun. I, I read sort of right now and I read a little bit backwards and then I, I read a retro thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't, I don't necessarily have um, favorite a favorite comic. You know, I like a lot of different stories coming from different places because I think that there's something in all of them, and I don't sort of fix myself to any any one kind of uh, storytelling because I don't think that anybody's any one kind of uh, person. You know, mm-hmm. um, and it's always interesting to read wide and varied because you're bound to find stuff that's quite quirky and quite different. And in that sense, mm-hmm. I'm reading this one. Hell Rider, yes. Yeah. I'm reading this because, of course, it's where the butterfly appears first, you know. And mm-hmm. I wanted to write a butterfly story. And I always try to um, get the source material if I can, because I I just, I just, I just enjoy doing that because it gives me a better feel for, you know. We've had some great comic book recommendations, self-care. We've heard a lot about the the comics that you're working on in the projects, which Vic argues against me, but I'm, but I'm, but I think Silk Cotton is seeping into my head a little bit more as well. But now I want to ask you about food. I want to ask you, what is one of your favorite restaurants that you love going to? Well, uh, because I live in London, um, right. you know, and uh, of course I'm from Caribbean background. Mm. Um, well, South American because Guyana technically is on the continent. Yeah, it's still Caribbean, <laughs> and <laughs> right, it's just a map. And yeah. um, but the mentality is, you know, all that counts. And um, yeah, so in a way. I would have uh, cottons if if I'm having something that's, you know, particularly kind of Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, those those very same people right there. <laughs> you know, yes, I go I go to cottons um, mm-hmm. if if I'm, you know, wanting to to enjoy uh, sort of some kind of mm-hmm. some kind of nostalgia. It's, yes, it's, it's it's quite nice for that. Um, yeah, and, and they they make they make very the food is good the 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 drinks are delicious and yeah yeah why why would you do this to us you why know? that's that picture right there is just wow yes that's, why would you why would you do this it's to me I mean, beautifully it's done like, in so many ways oh my god yeah yeah wow, it's yes. okay I would never yeah. recommend a place where we write. I wouldn't be happy to go yeah, myself no. you know this is public people might come for me later. Telling me yeah. things like you you invited us to this and woo. <laughs> I never want to hear someone say, Oh yeah, I like this restaurant, and then you go there and it's just the worst time possible. I would be yeah. highly upset. Yes, exactly. Like so this is one of the reasons why I would never recommend any other place that's that. but cottons is lovely. Um as I, as I mentioned to you, I have a friend who's a caterer, so you know, he kind of makes a lot of uh, Caribbean kind of dishes and things for lots of different events and all of that. But if I was going to eat out, you know, then this would be the place I would go. And um, sometimes um, if I, if I'm, you know, wanting to eat uh, something that is, that's, uh, that's kind of um, fusion or something like that, I mm-hmm. may go to a place called Busaba, um, mm. um, Busaba Etai, which is, you know, quite, quite nice as well. But yeah, so it's 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 nice. It's it's all right. Cottons is um, it has know. a very nice feel to it. I I, I love yeah. the yeah yeah yeah. It, it's everything. great. It, it's absolutely lovely. You, the drinks are yeah. The drinks the the they make a nice um, pina colada, which is you know, oh, okay. Yeah 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 yeah. Bottomless and of course they have trouble. they have pure rum, which comes from my country, which is Guyana, and it's called El Dorado. Oh, you know, if you want, if you want to drink some of that, you're you're in the right place. <laughs> okay, that yeah, yeah. The, the food there looks it looks the first that picture was beautiful 
of the oh, food. Oh yeah, the food is the food is lovely. The food is really really nice food, and you know you you can get um, sort of like um, cross country fusion, so it's really oh, okay. really nice in that sense. In that you can get bits from Jamaica, bits from Trinidad, bits from um, Guyana, you know, and in other places as well. So you you can find little bits, and also well, you have crossover things that every place has, you know, like. Uh, fried plantain. So okay, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> most most yeah. Caribbean countries have got that somewhere on their menu. Yeah, you know? they, that like like that has to be somewhere on the menu that has to be there, whether it's a shareable yeah. or appetizer yeah, that has to exactly. be on there. Yes, it's on. So okay. you know, you, you've got the common dishes as well. Yeah. So mm. they do very they do a very good job. Yes. It looks beautiful. So thank you very much for the food recommendation. <laughs> you've given us incredible comics. You've thank given us what you use for self-care and what yeah. we will get to see in possibly future works of you depending on what you see in the park yeah <laughs> you may not know you may see something in the comic and go that's yes that's it, so it might even just like it, it might just patch your eye but you'll go but then you might think wait she may have seen that in, in the park <laughs> i won't tell it'll i'll just let it i'll just let you it will just have to <laughs> let your imagination go and find what have you You've also yes. told us about uh, the incredible projects that you have coming out, which I'm excited about. Vic Argus, Silk Cotton, uh, the immense uh, behemoth that you behemoth. have said. Behemoth, that is Epiphany Engine. Yes. Epiphany Engine. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. You're very uh, welcome. Thank you very much for, again, uh, because of the time zone difference to everything, too. Yes. Make it finding the time. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Not you so very problem. much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank Hello you. out there. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> and there will be so much more to come. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna have the um the links for <clears throat> for uh Z Comics. Yes, I will have Z the link for... is definitely me always. Yes. Yes. I will have the link for uh, the Epiphany Engine uh, Kickstarter page where yes. it'll be the notify page. It's not. Yes, the... absolutely. You can sign up there, and as soon as it goes live, you will be notified, and yes. you can jump on and see all of the glorious goodies they have planned. It's going to be like an explosion of it's just awesomeness. Honestly, stunning. I can't even. Stunning. I, and I've I, only seen just I'm a little. Very bit. happy to see that. <laughs> and it's awesome. Yes. And you've given us a uh, immense place to eat of cottons. Uh, I'll be putting that link up in there as well. If anyone is in <laughs> London and you want it, and you're like, you know what, I want something that just go. The, the picture alone was enough, and I'm absolutely happy with that picture. Truthfully, <laughs> I will not be in London anytime soon. Food is real. <laughs> the food is so, real. If the picture looks that good, I automatically go, okay. The food may not look like that when I get there, but I know it's going to taste good because oh, no. it looks like the it's flavorful. Look like that as well. It's, it, oh, then that's it, just dangerous. It's true to form. <laughs> that's not, just dangerous. Yeah. yeah so, folks, true. as always, go out there, support uh, creatives that are doing everything, especially indie. They're amazing. If, you're, if your comic shop is not getting a certain comic, go in there and ask them, hey, can you get this? Can you get that? They might start bringing it in, and that's another thing that you know a, a creative, an artist, a writer, what have you, whatever their position is, is getting them out there. And it's more, and that's awesome. So I want to say thank you very much to Colleen Douglas. Truly appreciate it. You're, You're very welcome. I'm happy to have been here. Thank you so very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day, um, evening, whatever time zone is that you're in, and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.